I'm going to continue this brief discussion of the quantum harmonic oscillator by looking at um, what we can deduce about the eigenstates and the eigenvectors of n, the number operator. So let's assume um, that we have a, a state, um, an eigenstate of n, um, let's call that phi, um, and it's going to have an eigenvalue of lambda. That's not really saying very much, all we're doing is assuming um, that we've got a state. Now if we contract um, that on the left, bra phi, then we get phi, bra phi, n hat, ket phi is equal to, um, well, we're just going to get lambda on the right hand side, the reason being that when you take the contraction of bra phi, lambda, ket phi, the lambda comes outside because it's a number, and then we're assuming that phi is normalized, um, so that gives us 1. Now let's substitute in for the form of um, the number operator, so we find that bra phi, um, then we have a plus, and then we have a minus, um, and then we have ket phi, um, and that's equal to lambda. Um, now we're going to use a useful trick, which is to say that we can take an operator inside a bra or a ket. When you take an operator inside a ket, of course it stays as it is. When you take it inside the bra, um, it becomes its Hermitian conjugate. Um, so now we see that we have um, a plus dagger acting on phi in the bra, um, and then we have a minus phi in the ket, um, but a plus dagger is just a minus, that's, uh, that's essentially trivial to show. So we see that a minus phi in the bra, a minus phi in the ket is equal to lambda. Okay, um, that's a, a useful and uh, a, an interesting point to find. So now let's take that further um, and define a new state. Um, So here's our new state. Um, it's related to phi, so we're going to call it um, ket phi with a tilde over the top. Um, and we're going to say that's the state you get when you act with a minus the lowering operator um, on the original state phi. Um, we now know from um, the line above, um, in fact, let's give that little equation up there a, a number, number one. So equation one implies um, that bra phi tilde, ket phi tilde, um, is equal to lambda. Um, that's just substituting in, and that in turn implies that lambda must be greater than or equal to 1. It's a 0, sorry. Um, that's a key point, um, and I will, after just removing something down here, I will just write that as, I'll put a red box on that, um, just to emphasize this point. So we know that lambda must be greater than or equal to zero um, because it is a the result of um, a square modulus. So now <coughs> um, let's think about what happens when we act with n hat on um, our state phi tilde. Um, we're going to substitute in for both n hat and phi tilde and we'll see that we've got uh, a plus a minus, that's just n hat remember, um, and then we have a minus um, ket phi. Now we can use the commutator um, of a plus and a minus, so we know that, um, I'll put this over here on the right, a minus a plus minus a plus a minus um, is equal to 1. Um, so we could rearrange that and we can say that, take the a plus a minus to the right hand side, and that would say that a minus a plus minus 1 is a plus a minus. So we'll substitute that in. We have a minus a plus minus 1, um, that's just using the commutator, acting on a minus on ket phi. Okay, I'm going to go to a new page here. Um, let's continue on with this. Uh, and we're going to multiply out that particular little set of brackets. So we've, we're still working on n hat phi tilde um, and we see that that's equal to um, a minus a plus a minus ket phi uh, minus a minus ket phi. Um, and that, of course, now if we substitute in for the a plus a minus, we see that we now have a minus acting on the number operator acting on phi. Uh, minus a minus acting on phi, 
Um, but we know what n hat acting on phi is. Um, that is just, um, I'm just changing to a different color here. So this we know is just lambda phi, because that's how we defined it in the beginning. Um, so we can write that n hat acting on phi tilde is equal to lambda a minus phi minus a minus phi. In other words, n hat on phi tilde is equal to lambda minus 1 a minus phi, which is just lambda minus 1 phi tilde. So that means that phi tilde is an eigenstate of n. number operator n with the eigenvalue uh, lambda minus 1. That's rather useful. So what we've shown is, given one eigenstate of the number operator, we can generate a whole family of eigenstates of the number operator just by using the lowering operator. You can do a very similar piece of maths. Um, of course, the only difference is that you're going to end up with the, uh, the, the commutator the other way around to look at what happens when you act with n hat on a plus on phi. Um, and by doing that, you can show that a plus acting on phi, um, in fact, let me write that, a plus on phi is also an eigenvector, um, an eigenstate, with eigenvalue which I will abbreviate to eval, um, lambda plus 1. Okay, let's go to a, a, a third page, and this is going to be the last page, and just think about what this means. Um, now, we know, in fact we showed earlier, that lambda must be greater than or equal to 0. That followed because it was a square modulus. Um, therefore, we can deduce something um, about the system. Um, we can, in fact, deduce the following. There must be... Um, a minimum eigenvalue, um, a minimum value of lambda, um, with an associated um, state, let's call it ket phi n. Um, the reason that must be the case is because we know that lambda must be greater than or equal to zero. Um, so you can't go below zero, therefore there is a minimum. Now let's act with a minus on that state, ket phi m. That must give naught. If it didn't give naught, then we could have a, an eigenvalue smaller than the smallest minimum eigenvalue, um, and we will see that that would mean that we would have negative eigenvalues, which contradicts our original assumption. Um, now we can take um, that state. Um, and we can say that, let's act on the left of that, on a plus with a plus, so we get a plus a minus phi m, um, but that must still equal naught, because a plus acting on naught is still naught, because zero is um, zero. Um, and that implies that we have um, n hat acting on phi m, the minimum state, is equal to um, zero, now, knowing that 0 multiplying anything gives us 0, we can actually add on the right-hand side that that must equal 0 phi m because we know that phi m is an eigenstate of n, the number operator, and therefore the lowest eigenvalue um, is 0. Uh, that's rather an important concept, um, and what it allows us to do is therefore to show um, that all of the eigenvalues of the number operator are integer. So we only have integer values of occupation in the quantum harmonic oscillator. Um, now we know, actually, um, that the Hamiltonian h-hat um, is equal to um, the number operator plus a half multiplied by h bar omega. Um, and therefore we can deduce, since h hat and n hat commute, they share eigenstates, um, and therefore the eigenspectrum um, of h 
can be shown um, to be n plus a half h bar omega, which is the familiar result. It's very easy to show um, that the, com the commutator of the Hamiltonian um, with a plus or a minus gives you the eigenspectrum of H as being quantized in units of H bar omega. Um, and it's very easy to show that the eigenstates of N are the same as the eigenstates of H, the Hamiltonian.